This video is walking you through this teacher reference document about how to prepare generator materials so that students can make their own generators. This is coming right after we have dissected this generator in class um, and we noticed it had some copper wire and this piece here is a magnet. And if we spin them against each other, we can light an LED. So we're wondering if we can do that using similar materials, um, but making them ourselves. So notice here I've got enough materials to make one of these, but you will need more to make a class set. Um, one paper tube, uh, one very heavy steel nail, uh, two cylindrical neodymium magnets. Um, I have much less wire than you will need because I'm just gonna show you a small version, but you'll need a lot of this magnet wire, some sticky tack to hold it all together, and some alligator clips, some sandpaper, um, and so on. So I'm gonna start off uh, leaving four inches of loose wire. I'm going to start wrapping some of this wire around the tube. Now, notice this is this is what they call magnet wire. Um, it is very thin, and most importantly, it is enamel coated. So if you if you look really closely at this end, um, you can't really see any copper. Um, you can see this reddish color. On this side, I've sanded off that reddish color. That reddish color is an enamel coating. It's an insulator that prevents the wire from traveling from one wire to another. So we can wrap these um, wires really close. And magnet wire is absolutely essential for making this project work. Um, notice also I'm starting my wrap pretty close to the end of one tube, not in the middle of the tube. Ultimately, I'm trying to make something like this, and it's much easier for students to access where the important pieces are, like the magnets and the nail, if it's all closer to one end. So depending on how much wire I have, I will wrap more or fewer wraps um, in my first set. And then I'm going to cross over. So that this would usually be between 200 and 400 wraps just on one side. I've only done like 15 or so. So you're gonna end up with a lot more wraps. And then once I've done 200 or 300, then I'm gonna cut across and I'm gonna leave a gap before I wrap the same number again. Um, so I end up getting two uh, different collections of, of wraps. A word about coil wrapping before we go on. Uh, the distance from the spinning magnets to the coils themselves matters a lot for the strength of the generator. So our guideline is the two outermost coils in your wrapping should be less than five centimeters apart. Uh, here's an example of what that looks like. Um, this is a good wrapping distance. Um, we can tell this measurement is about four and a half centimeters or so from between the two outermost coils of this wrapping. However, this one is likely not going to work. If I was to continue wrapping around this, the distance between the outermost coils here is more like seven and a half or seven centimeters. That's not close enough to the magnets in order for the generator function as well as we need it to. And then I would take some sticky tack and put it across both wraps to sort of hold it together. You're gonna do this later also, but it's important to sort of keep it uh, stuck there now so it doesn't all fall apart. If you start getting wires tangling, it makes this job much, 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 much harder. Um, so notice this says, I wanna finish by wrapping the wire around itself three or four times. Um, so after I cut the wire, like this, um, I would want to do one one more wrap and then sort of twist it around itself like an overhand knot a few times to just keep it all together. And then you can kind of cinch that tight so it stays in one kind of like nice package. Um, remember, each side is gonna have half the total number of wraps. So if I did 200, wraps on one side, that means I'm going to end up with a total of 400 wraps. Um, once I have those wraps, I'm going to take this nail and I'm going to poke it through the center of the two wraps. 
And I'm gonna try my best to get it close. Don't poke your finger, but you can, nice thing about using cardboard here is you can poke through it easily. And then you really wanna make sure that the nail is uh, close enough to the center of the tube that the magnets are able to uh, connect directly to the nail. So that the magnets that you're attaching to the nail later, that students attach to the nail, won't bump up against the side. So I'm trying to keep it level this way, and I'm also trying to keep it centered this way, and then I'm just gonna poke it through again, kind of twist it a little bit to make it work. That's like, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And then I can just kind of like push it in and out to make that a little less tight. Um, as students use these more and more, it'll get looser, but you want it to be like freely easy to spin. Um, once I've done that, I can take the nail out and then I need to sand off this enamel coating. Um, so the, what, what I like to do is just take a piece of sandpaper and kind of fold it and uh, press the sandpaper against the wire and then pull it. Um, just kind of like scrape off as much of that enamel as I can. Um, it's hard to get all of it, but what you're really trying to do is get enough that you can see the copper. So the copper is that lighter orange color. And you're gonna do that to both sides of the wire. Um, if you end up breaking the wire here, no big deal. Um, that's why we have four inches or so on either side. Some of it's gonna break off eventually because it's because it's very brittle wire, so that's okay. So once I have two ends of the wire that are uh, that have the enamel coating sanded off of them, um, then I'm gonna move on to step six, which involves these magnets. Um, notice I've tried to use a marker, oopsie, to um, label the north side of these magnets, and the marker rubs off really easily. It'll be better to use nail polish if you have it, but you would need to do that a day ahead of time or a few hours ahead of time so it can really, really cure and dry. Um, but the nail polish will stick better for longer. Um, the Even a permanent marker will rub off of these magnets pretty quickly. You wanna, if you can, use a compass to identify the north pole of the magnet. If you don't have those compasses available or you're, you don't trust that your compasses aren't uh, reversed, which happens a lot, um, you don't really need to do this. What you do need to make sure is that the labels are on the same side of the magnet. Notice these two sides are both labeled with a little bit of red. And if I try to push them together, I can't get them to attract. So I know that whether or not they're the North Pole, they are the same pole of the magnet. That is the most important thing. Um, don't use attraction to something else, like a nail, to determine the poles. It Both sides will attract to the nail. Um, and notice, to investigate challenge four, students will need tubes of different wraps. So you'll want to prepare a few different tubes. Notice I have one here with 100 wraps. I have one here with 300 and 400. The, the most I've gone up to is 800. Um, 800 wraps is, is a lot, but it, it will work really nicely. There's just a whole lot of wire wrapped around the tube. Um, so it can fall off. You, you'll end up needing a little bit more sticky tack to really secure it in place. Um, once you've made these, I would recommend writing the number of wraps on the tube so that, that so that that's easy for students to know. Um, I would make five if you have if you have a five work groups in your in your classroom. I would make five with at least four hundred wraps. Um, as many as eight hundred is great, and then one each of say four hundred, three hundred, and two hundred, and one hundred. So so students can investigate what the effect of the number of wraps on the functioning of the generator is. Um, moving on to this one last thing, when students actually make this, um, they're gonna try a few things, but they're gonna end up with something that looks like this. So this is, this is where the knowing the side of the magnets comes into play, is I need to make sure that the arrangement of the magnets is, um, 
is conducive to, to actually causing a change in magnetic field as I spin the nail. And notice if I connect this generator to my LED, we'll go ahead and try that. Um, this is a 400 wrap coil. And if I connect the LED, I should be able to get the, the LED to light up okay. Um, notice I'm spinning it quite quickly. I'm kind of like flicking it as fast as I can and it doesn't light for long. It lights quite briefly. Um, students challenge is then to figure out how to make that light last for longer or to light more than one light um, in general to increase the efficiency um, or the effectiveness of their generator um, if they're using that terminology. Um, one thing that they can do directly to affect that is it's very common for the magnets to kind of like rotate around so that they're stuck here. We've found that it works really well to just get a, a wad of sticky tack and make it into a little ball. And then once it's done this, use a finger to kind of push that wad of sticky tack against the two magnets. Um, and the two magnets will push around to the other side. That's okay. Um, but then I get another piece of sticky tack and use it to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna take this little wad and push it against these magnets. Oopsie, I lost my, lost my piece of sticky tack on the other side, but stu students can play with this. Um, I'm actually gonna make this a little smaller and kind of push it back and forth, like use their finger and push it down and then turn it and use their finger and push it down again and then turn it. Um, and they should be able to get something that's pretty secure so that even when they're spinning it pretty hard or when they're spinning it with a drill or they connect some string to this side and kind of yank on the string, the magnets will stay in place. This does affect the efficiency of the generator quite a lot. Um, making that change will increase the, the output of the generator by about 20%, which is significant. So when, you, when students end class, you should encourage them to dismantle these generators so that the next class can use them. That's really easy to do. Even if they have sticky tech on them, they basically just pull out the nail. And then you've got these two magnets um, separating the magnets can be a little tricky. I don't encourage you to ask students to do that, although they may have to do it. I've found that the best way to do it is kind of like put your thumb at the, at the separation of the two and then use two fingers to kind of like pull them against each other, against your thumb, um, and then separate them that way. It can be pretty hard to get those magnets separated. If you want a good way to store them, it works to just stick them to the nail, not to each other, but to the nail. And then you could give this to another group of students with the magnets separated from each other.